continue. They changed the word of Allah. But in this ayah, the word dinar is present. And the word dinar in the Quran refers to a gold coin. No one challenges that. And then in Surah to Yusuf, they took him out of the well. And they took him to Misr. And when the Quran says Misr, it is not referring to the whole of Egypt. No. Misr at that time was only the eastern delta between the Nile and the Red Sea, where Banu Israel had settled. That's Misr. And they sold him in Misr. وَشَرَوْهُ بِثَمَنٍ بَخْسٍ دَرَاهِمَ مَعْدُودًا they sold him for a few measly dirhams. And a dirham in the Quran is a silver coin. Last night we had the word warik in the masjid. And so in the Quran we have money. And money in the Quran is precious metals. And money in the sunnah is precious metals as well. And when there is a shortage, of gold and silver, then you can use commodities. If you are in the Indonesian island of Java, oh, that's a beautiful island, you must visit Java. Rice, hundreds and hundreds of acres, miles and miles and miles of lush green grass, rice. So if you're in Java, and you run short of sunnah money, gold and silver coins. What would you use as money? Rice, of course, even though rice is not in this list. It is, it is a commodity of food consumption. It is in abundant supply in the market. It has a shelf life. And if you're in Cuba, you know Fidel Castro doesn't smoke cigars anymore. You know that? Huh? Right. Good. So don't tell me tobacco, eh? If you're in Cuba and you want to bring back sunna money, you don't have gold and silver, what would you use as money? You would use sugar. Sugar. Hmm? It, it, it's so simple. Now then, so long as we use this money, the money that Allah and His Messenger has ordained that we use, this money functioned successfully as money. What are the functions of money? Number one, money functions as a medium of exchange for buying and selling. Notice, I am teaching this subject so simply there is nothing complicated here. And so when you go back home and you have to teach the subject, please teach it simply and do not make it complicated. It's a simple subject. If you have to Look at the functions of money, you would find that money functions as a medium of exchange for buying and selling. I, I need a haircut. And Aisha said to me, I don't have time to cut your hair, you have to go to the barber this time. Because, you know, I don't have time, so I say, Aisha, come cut for me. So I went to the barber, and he cut my hair, and when he's finished cutting my hair, I offered him my book, Surah al Kaf in the Modern Age. He looked at me, he smiled, he said, Sheikh, I'm not interested in your book. Bah! Barter, barter has its limitations. And the Lord, who is all wise, would know that. And so I need something called money. 
that I can pay the barber for cutting my hair. And then he can use that money to go and buy a kilogram of tomatoes. And so the first function of money is to be a medium of exchange. Gold and silver, wheat and barley function successfully, except that when you're using commodities as money, it'll only be microtransactions, not macro. You can't buy a house with gold, or with, with wheat. Microtransactions, temporarily. The second function of money is to be a measure of value. What is the value of a haircut? And what is the value of the book? So long as mankind use real money, it always functions successfully as a measure of value. And so the black African woman, in her own country, incidentally, in her own Africa, who had to work as a domestic servant. Sometimes not one, because six of them in her home. When she works, the black African woman, I know her, because everywhere I went, I used to meet her. When she worked for a whole month, she would get a wage that was a, a just wage on the basis of the measure of the value of her labor. Hmm? And so our money functions successfully, not only as a medium of exchange, but also as a measure of value. Can I get a water, please? Water. Thank you. But money has a third function to perform, and that is to be a store of value. In Surah al kaf when that man dug a hole, remember, and buried his money in the hole, and then he built a wall, and he prayed because maybe he was terminally ill, and he had little children. That is, often children, when they grow up and become adults, that they would be able to get the money he'd left behind for them. If he left behind a hundred gold coins, and the hundred gold coins could buy a hundred camels, then he would want that his money, twenty years from now, would have stored its value preserved its value so that 20 years later when his children got that money from the hole that money could still buy a hundred camels provided demand and supply being constant our money the money in the Quran the money in the Sunnah perform that function successfully of being a store of value. And this is how the world traded. If you wanted to rip off someone, what you'd have to do is to mix some kind of alloy with the gold or chip the gold.